The platform connects producers with consumers and allows them to exchange value. Some platforms allow direct connection between users, as we see in the case of social networks. Other platforms do not facilitate direct connections between users, but establish other mechanisms for value exchange. In every such exchange, the producer and the consumer exchange three things information, goods or services, and some form of currency. So let's first talk about the exchange of information. Whether it's the cattle auctioneer shouting out prices to an assembled crowd of ranchers or an eBay search results page displaying the goods available, every platform interaction starts with the exchange of information. This information enables the parties to decide whether and how to engage in any further exchange. Thus, every platform business must be designed to facilitate the exchange of information. Some platforms have the exchange of information as their sole purpose, for example, a news forum like Reddit. But even platforms whose primary goal is to enable the exchange of physical goods or services must enable the exchange of information. Notice that, in every case, the exchange of information takes place through the platform itself. As a result of the information exchange, the platform participants may decide to exchange valuable goods or services as well. In some cases, the exchange of goods or services may also occur through the platform. On Facebook, photos, links, and posts with personal or other news are exchanged among users. While on YouTube, videos are exchanged. Each item exchanged among platform users can be referred to as a value unit. In some cases, goods or services are exchanged inside of the platform, as we know like YouTube or Facebook. In other cases, goods or services are exchanged outside of the platform, although information about the delivery may be tracked and exchanged on the platform. For example, transportation services requests via Uber are delivered on real city streets using actual cars. And let's talk about the exchange of currency. When goods or services are exchanged between platform participants, they are typically paid for using some form of currency. In many cases, this is traditional currency, money transmitted in one of a variety of ways, including credit card data, a PayPal transaction, a Bitcoin transfer, or rarely physical cash. However, there are other forms of value, and therefore other ways in which consumers pay producers in the world of platforms. Video viewers on YouTube or followers on Twitter pay the producer with attention, which adds value to the producer in a variety of ways. Community members on sites like TripAdvisor, Dribbble, and 500px pay by enhancing the reputation of producers whose work they like. Thus, attention, fame, influence, reputation, and other intangible forms of value can play the role of currency on a platform. Next, let's talk about the why of platform design. Platforms are designed one interaction at a time. Thus, the design of every platform should start with the design of the core interaction that it enables between producers and the consumers. The core interaction is the single most important form of activity that takes place on the platform, the exchange of value that attracts more users to the platform in the first place. And so, the core interaction involves three key components, the participants, the value unit, and the filter. First, let's talk about the participants. There are fundamentally two participants in any core interaction. The producer, who creates value, and the consumer, who consumes value. One norm of platform design is recognizing that the same user may play a different role in different interactions. The same person may be both a host and a guest on Airbnb. The user may upload videos as well as viewing them on YouTube. A well-designed platform makes it easy for users to move from row to row. Conversely, many users and many types of users may perform the same role in an interaction. For example, one of the most common interactions on Facebook is a status update, a content posting that informs participants in the network about what a particular member is doing or thinking. The producer who drives the change of status on a particular Facebook page may be an individual, a business, a group of friends, or a non-profit organization, but the fundamental role remains the same. The incentives that encourage different parties to participate are different, but the roles remain consistent. Let's go on to the value unit. 
In virtually every case, the core interaction starts with the creation of a value unit by the producer. For example, on a marketplace like eBay or Airbnb, the product or the service listing information is the value unit that is created by a seller and then serves to buyers based on their search query or past interests. Videos on YouTube, tweets on Twitter, profiles of professionals on LinkedIn, and listings of available cars on Uber are all value units. In each case, users are provided with a basis for deciding whether or not they want to proceed to some further exchange. At last, we are going to talk about the filter. The value unit is delivered to selected consumers based on filters. A filter is an algorithmic, software-based tool used by the platform to enable the exchange of appropriate value units between users. A well-designed filter ensures that platform users receive only value units that are relevant and valuable to them. A search query is an example of a filter. The platform employs the filter to select specific units that match the search terms and delivers them to the consumer. Once this exchange of information happens, everything else clicks into action. The core interaction is completed, value has been created and exchanged. So we can have the conclusion that Participants plus value unit plus filter equals core interaction. When designing a platform, your first and most important job is to decide what your core interaction will be, and then to define the participants, the value units, and the filters to make such core interaction possible. To designing a successful platform, the core interaction is the why of platform design. And the purpose is to make core interaction possible indeed. To the extent possible to make the inevitably by making them highly valuable to all participants. How do we achieve this? Let's go to examine the how of platform design. Platform must perform three key function in order to encourage a high volume of valuable core interaction, which we summarize as pull, facilitate, and match. Let's examine each of these three crucial functions in a little more detail. Pull. Attracting consumers to platforms presents challenges that pipeline companies don't face. To begin with, platform need to solve a chicken or egg problem that pipeline business don't suffer from, users won't come to a platform unless it has valve, and platform won't have value unless users use it. A second poll challenge revolves around keeping the interest of users who visit or sign up for the platform. One powerful tool that encourages users to keep returning to the platform is the feedback loop. Effective feedback loops help to swell the network, increase value creation, and enhance network. There are two kinds of feedback loop, one is the single-use feedback loop, another is multi-user feedback loop. Other factors strengthen or weaken a platform's ability to pull users. One is the value of currency available for exchange on the platform. Pull can also be increased by leveraging the outside networks of participants. INSTagram and WhatsApp polls in tens of millions of participants in a few years mainly by piggybacking on their users. Facebook networks facilitate. Platforms create an infrastructure in which value can be created and exchange. And lay out principles that govern these interactions. That's what the process of facilitating is all about. Facilitating interactions is making it as easy as possible for producers to create and exchange valuable goods and services via the platform. Facilitating interactions may also involve reducing barriers to usage. Lowering barriers to usage in this, in some cases, increasing barriers has a positive effect on usage. In other cases, platform must develop intrusive rules for curating value units and other producer-created content in order to encourage desirable interactions and discourage undesirable ones. Match. A successful platform creates efficiencies by matching the right users with one another and ensuring that the most relevant goods and services are exchanged. A successful platform creates efficiencies by matching the right users with one another and ensuring that the most relevant goods and services are exchanged. A successful platform creates rewarding matches on a consistent basis, using data about producers consumers the value units created and he goods and services to be exchanged. Platform companies need to develop an explicit data acquisition strategy. Data required for optimal matching may be extremely diverse. Users vary greatly in their willingness to share data and their readiness to respond to data-driven activity. It can be collected in three ways incentives leverage game elements and third-party providers. With continual improvement of data acquisition and using analysis methods is an important challenge for any organization, seeking to build and maintain a platform. All three key functions pull, facilitate, 
and match are essential to a successful platform. Balancing the three functions is the challenge. Beyond the core interaction, the platform that fails to add desirable new features is likely to be abandoned by users. Successful platforms will scale by layering new interactions on top of the core interaction. Facebook is building a dating project to help people find partners. There are 200 million users on Facebook who list their relationship status as single. The new interaction is going to match users for building real long-term relationships. Most new interactions emerge from experience, observation, and necessity. Such as Alipay was originally designed to address the security of Teo Bayo's transaction in 2003. It allows buyers and sellers who have not been trusted to complete the deal through a third-party guarantee. Not all new interactions will succeed. LinkedIn, the employment-oriented service platform, had layered an additional interaction that allowing users to organize themselves into groups and start discussions. The new interaction didn't achieve popularity, because such professional network encourages self-promotion. But the loudest users in the groups were often also the most obnoxious. So, LinkedIn went on to add a further interaction that allowed recruiters to use the site to target candidates to target ads to relevant professionals. And later, LinkedIn allowed thought leaders and all users to post on LinkedIn for others to read. These new interactions, effectively turning LinkedIn into a publishing platform and gives users more reasons to visit. There are several ways of new interactions layered on top of the core interaction. 1. By changing the value unit exchanged between existing users, like Facebook, is building a dating product. 2. By introducing a new category of users as either producers or consumers, like LinkedIn, invited recruiters and advertisers as producers. 3. By allowing users to exchange new kinds of value units, like Taobao founded Alipay. 4. By curating members of an existing user group to create a new category of users, like LinkedIn, invited thought leaders to become producers. Adding new features to a platform is powerful to increase its usefulness and attract more users, but innovation will lead to complexity, which makes the platform more difficult being navigated. A long-standing computer network concept, the end-to-end -end principle, strikes a balance between this innovation and complexity. The principle states, in a general-purpose network, application-specific functions ought to reside in the end hosts of a network rather than in intermediary nodes. Only the highest volume, highest value features that cut across apps should become part of the core platform. There are two reasons for this rule. First, when application-specific features are run by the app itself, the user experience will be much cleaner. Second, a platform ecosystem can evolve faster when the core platform is a clean and simple system. Best designed platforms incorporate this structural principle now. In a long run, a successful platform must have a more modular approach. First, let's begin with a definition provided by Baldwin and Clark. Modularity is a strategy for organizing complex products and processes efficiently. A modular system is composed of units or modules that are designed independently but still function as an integrated whole. Designers achieve modularity by partitioning information into visible design rules and hidden design parameters. Modularity is beneficial only if the partition is precise, unambiguous, and complete. The visible design rules are decisions that affect subsequent design decisions. Ideally, the visible design rules are established early in a design process and communicated broadly to those involved. And in 2008 Carlos Young Baldwin and C. Jason Woodard provided a definition of a stable system core. The system is partitioned into a set of core components with low variety and a complementary set of peripheral components with high variety. The low variety components constitute the platform. They are the long-lived elements of the system and thus implicitly or explicitly establish the system's interfaces and the rules governing interactions among the different parts. The power of modularity is one of the reasons that the personal computer industry grew so quickly in 1990s. The key components components of PC systems were CPUs, GPUs, RAMs and HDS. Each of these subsystems communicated with the others using well-defined interfaces that allowed for tremendous innovation. Platform should decomposing systems into clean modules and instead proceed. Thus, this can mobilize an external ecosystem of developers who can build on top of the core platform and extend its offerings into new markets. Rearchitecting the platform toward a modular design is possible. First, you should analyze the degree of modularity the system has already achieved. You can use a tool that is designed structure matrices to analyze your platform system. 
There has an example of a product that successfully evolved from an integral to a modular architecture. When the software was put into the public domain as open source, the commercial firm that owned the copyright invested significant resources to make the transition. It had been broken into smaller subsystems, then have been maintained by distributed teams of volunteer developers. When you are launching a new platform, or seeking to enhance and grow an existing platform, you should mind the principles of platform design will maximize your chances of value creation. We cannot fully control the planning of the platform, most of the activity on the platform are controlled by users, not by the owners or managers of the platform.